Montana and we just pulled into the parking lot and we're just gonna go into the visitor center now we already did our tickets online another beautiful day in Montana Lewis and Clark Caverns historic district Okay, Brenda's going over here to get us checked in. <laughs> well, there's the visitor center, and we're just waiting to uh, start the tour, which is going to start at 2:30, and we got about another eight minutes, and we'll go from there. Okay, we're starting up the trail. We made it up here to the top. There's the visitor center over there in the distance. We had to walk up here. And we're all here. Okay, 1892, two local ranchers were out hunting. They happened to look up the hillside, right down the hillside. Personally, if they were hunting, I think being up there would be a better spot to scout and see where the animals, the critters were. Uh, anyway, they saw something they thought was unusual. They really couldn't tell for sure if they were looking at smoke or fog or clouds. They weren't real sure what was happening. Turned out to be a condensation column. You know, like when you see your breath in the winter? That's what was happening. They were seeing the cave breathe. And that's when the really warm, moist air, 48 degrees is really warm in the winter, believe me. Uh -huh. <laughs> and the warm, moist air would come out on a cold, dry day. You can still see the condensation sometimes if conditions are right now in the winter time. You never see it in the summertime. Anyways, they went over to check that out and they found that hole. And they said, wow, let's check that out some more. And they looked and oh, they said, that looks like it goes a long ways down. And they said, we don't have any ropes, we don't have any lights. They were smart ranchers. They said, let's not go in. Mm -hmm. So they did not. In 1898, six years later, Tom Williams, one of those ranchers, took a group of his friends with ropes and lights. They were prepared, and when they went in, it was awesome. They were super excited. They were all super excited, and they thought more people should see it, so they asked their friend Dan Morrison <coughs> to help out. Now, did anybody travel from the west today at mile marker 5? See the big hole up above the road? Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you want to guess what that is? Quarry mine. Yes, how did you know that? I asked. <laughs> <laughs> Have someone told you? They told you my secret? <coughs> yep. It was a limestone quarry. Dan Morrison used to take big chunks of limestone, bigger than these, down to the train, and the train hauled it into three forts where they had a cement factory. So because of that, he had employees, he had equipment, and so he told those ranchers, I'll help you develop the cave. So he and his employees and relatives did. They put in s over 2,000 wooden steps. They put in a spiral staircase made of rope and wood, mostly wood, but some rope, that went 100 feet down, and he probably fixed a few little passageways to make it a little bit easier, but not a whole lot easier necessarily. Anyway, so he put enough time and money into it. He says, I'm going to get cave tours and I'm going to charge. He charged a dollar a day, which is probably comparable to about $25 nowadays. So his tours did take all day. That's why I said a dollar a day, a dollar a tour, same thing, because they left from down up the river. If they came by train, they got off at the train station, which is even a little more to the east than if you go that way, you'll see it off to the right there. They got off the train station, walked, came here, continued up the hill another 300 feet. And that was quite the walk. That was a 1,400 foot, 1400 foot elevation difference between down there and up to the original discovery hole. So they ate their lunch in the brown waterfall room, then turned around and came back out. And you know, I can tell that's hotter now than it was this morning because I can feel the air the coming out of the there stronger, stronger than it was this morning. Okay, if you wait right here, I have to get the lights. I'll be right now. Ooh. <laughs> I was 
hoping it squeaks one more time. Okay, if you wait for me at the second light, if you're I say you go right here and wait. Cool. and cool in here after walking out there in the heat. Any questions about how the cage is made? I probably didn't mention that tectonic plates in the fault line. They also contribute to the cage being here because normally Montana they go north-south. Here in this particular area they kind of have an east-west tilt to it and there's more than one fault line surrounding the cage. So to make formations the water does go through the air and the ground picking up carbon dioxide and uh, that changes it into what? We have H2O plus CO2, what do you get? Water. Carbonated water, yeah, soda pop. But it's also slightly acidic, it's very weak carbonic acid. And that acid helps to leach the minerals out of the calcium carbonate, the limestone. The most predominant mineral is calcite. If it's pure calcite, beautiful formations, a good share of them have this dry gray look to it. And if you look up here, these are damaged from the blasting of the exit tunnel. We know that happened, it took a year and a half between 1939 and 1941. So we can date that. And I think some of this growth is a little more than one cubic inch in 80 years. But some of it, look, there's no new growth right there. Point with my finger. But there is some new growth behind that one. So the average growth rate is just that. North Pole, and ta-da, there is Santa. He loses a lot of weight this time of year. He looks like a little garden gnome. And the reason is, he's not eating Christmas cookies and milk every night like he does in December. <laughs> Make all kinds of things out of all these in your head. They also gave off more heat than the LED lights did. So we're here at the Lewis and Clark Caverns RV Park. They have an RV park here right before you go up to the cabins. We're going to show you real quick the RV park. We're just going to do a little quick drive around. a bad place to come to stay overnight if you're coming in across the night i-90 and want to stop and see the cavern looks like so they have power they don't have water and they don't have sewage yeah, there's some with power yep they have yep. on this end they have some with power they do have some here with power and water set power and water on this end 